I'll give you a short, short overview of uh, our visitor center in the south of Sweden. It's called Naturum Vattenriket, and uh, it's a place in um, close to the city of Kristianstad, as I said, in the south of Sweden. And we are a very proud Star Wetland Center, um, and I've been working with this ever since I was um, educated at the Stockholm University. I started off my work in 1989, building up the wetland, um, the work with the wetlands together with um, people that are no, no longer working now. And since 2010, the center has been in action. And we will actually start this presentation with a view from above. I hope you can see the film now with the wetland center in the middle of the wetlands along the Helge or river close to the city of Kristianstad. And as you see, the water level changes during the season from the low level with the green grass in the summer to the high water level in the winter. And as I said, our work started off very early and the visitor center came in quite late, uh, only more than 10 years ago. But we started in 1989 to, to work with the wetland area, the Ramsar site um, and the catchment area. We started off because the wetlands were under threat and we wanted to change people's attitudes regarding the water and the wetlands. So we started off building um, visitor sites where people could actually explore the area with uh, dry feet. Um, the area is very, very rich in biodiversity, um, actually one of the most rich areas in Sweden. Uh, due to that, we have so many different habitats there. And we have the city and um, everything is so well connected. Anyway, we started off by building this visitor site and uh, eventually in 2005, we were able to create a biosphere reserve, which is a UNESCO designation where the biosphere reserves on the planet, they are about, we're about 700. We all work with the goal to conserve landscape, nature, species, but to work together with people in the area and also to have a strong lo logistic support with people. And that's why we uh, eventually, um, finally, were able to build the wetland center that we had been waiting for so many years. We had wanted to build a wetland center even ever since 1989, but eventually in 2010, the Naturen Visitor Center was put in place in the middle of the wetlands, in the heart of the wetlands, but also very close to the city. Uh, now we have about 100,000 visitors every year to this beautiful place. It's free of entrance, no entrance fee, and um, people from, from the close area, but also many vi visiting tourists from other countries. Uh, I am the manager of the place and I have six staff, uh, four guides uh, and uh, two people working with technology and administration. And I wanted to tell you uh, some lessons we have learned um, during all these years. And I want to start with the change in attitudes that we uh, find so very important. Because when we started off in 1989, people did not regard the, wet, the wetlands or the water as something useful for the area. On the other hand, it was a curse. So people even put the city dump uh, in the middle of the wetlands, very close to the visitor center uh, in the 1960s. So we started off trying to change um, the attitudes and actually the Swedish name of our visitor center and the biosphere reserve is Vattenrike. And that means in Swedish, rich in water and also it means a water kingdom so by this word which is now very well known we started to show that it's not thick of water it's not waterlogged it's rich in water so from this curse uh, with a city dump and uh, people not regarding it as anything valuable we now have the visitor center we have hundred thousand visitors and people come to explore the wetlands so we think we have actually been able to to change the attitudes and we use these tools to work with other landscape types we don't always work with wetlands we work with the sandy dry grasslands and we can use the same same tools 
Another lesson that we want to spread is to, um, when you communicate, we think the most powerful message for the public is the love message based on uh, wonder and joy. Uh, if you use negative messages too often, we think that the communication will fall on deaf ears. And that is why we always try to focus on the love perspective. And that means we try to um, take children and adults, everyone out, out in the nature to give them first-hand experiences and create strong links between our visitors and the nature. Because we believe that people that go outdoors and enjoy nature as a child, they tend to be more environmentally responsive as adults. People will protect nature, not because they have to, but because they want to. So that is uh, for us a strong guideline in everything we do, the love uh, perspective. And of course, that means we try very hard to focus on the young. Um, we meet so many school children every year. Uh, we meet teachers, we meet uh, children from preschool up to university, but we also host a biosphere camp uh, in the summer because we are a biosphere reserve. We have this biosphere camp where the children on the picture enjoy nature, meet people uh, who benefit from nature, artists, um, people uh, working with agriculture, painters, uh, musicians. Um, as well as they experience nature. So for us, the focus on the young is very, very strong. But not only the young, uh, we try to focus on, on, we want everyone to be able to enjoy the wetlands uh, and the visitor site. And that is why we, when we can, uh, try to build boardwalks as this one on the picture, which, which is just outside the visitor center. Boardwalks that are good for people with buggies or people in a wheelchair and um, and also make people stay on the path. And so you can look at the, the valuable areas without damaging them. But also we try to make accessibility better by um, doing lots of audio guides where you can scan a QR code uh, out in the landscape and hear us tell about nature, culture, um, fun things about uh, the place you visit. Also, of course, the, the web page is important in this. And also the, uh, the, the uh, displays we have in the outdoor museums to keep texts simple, uh, to use simple words. And actually one person in our staff is a journalist and that is to make texts much more easy to read for people. So the activities we uh, host at Nature and Visitor Center have a very wide range. Um, and that is actually connected with how we uh, want to change the attitudes. Because we think uh, by offering a wide range of activities, we also uh, connect to a wide range of people. I think that it is, um, you need different keys, so to speak, to the lock of every heart. For some people, it is uh, joining us one late night on a bat safari to see the bats hunting outside Naturum. But for other people, it is listening to the water music played by our local symphony orchestra um, on the national day. So we try to combine activities, uh, including literature, music, poetry, as well as traditional field activities. And we hope there is something for everyone at our visitor center. As with the activities, uh, I think uh, it is important to also have a very broad communication and to understand that some people want to read things on a web page or on social media, others still want a map in their hand or a folder or a brochure. So we try to um, also have a very broad communication. And uh, if you want to know more about our area, I enc encourage you to follow us on Facebook or, or Instagram or, or um, LinkedIn. Um, for us as a biosphere reserve, the local involvement is one key uh, factor for us to work with. And we try that in different ways. 
Um, one very successful example is that we educate ambassadors for the biosphere every year, and we now have more than 300. And these are normal people, so to speak. They could be hairdressers, or they could be teachers, or they, uh, they um, grow carrots. And they just want to come and learn more about the biosphere. And the only thing we ask them to do is to spread the message. And also in the springtime, we have uh, bird guides or actually crane guides, because that is when the uh, big bird, the, Euro the European crane, come to our wetlands to feed and dance. And so many people come and to see these uh, beautiful birds. And on, on the picture, you can see one of the crane guides guiding a group of Ukraine uh, migrants that came to us um, uh, the early spring in 2022, of course. And we, uh, as soon as we could, uh, uh, transported them with a bus to the cranes to make them experience these beautiful birds to, to uh, think of something else for, for an hour or two. So we have the ambassadors, we have the crane guides, and we also have uh, the friends of Vattenriket um, that support us. Least, last but not least, uh, the economy. Um, and I think this is quite important to show um, also that even if we don't have any entrance fee to our visitor center, Naturum, several studies have shown that we make a great impact to the local economy. And that is because all the people that come to our area because of the visitor center and because of the work we do in the biosphere reserve and with the visitor sites. So actually researchers have shown several times that the spending of the visitors that without Naturum and the work uh, with the biosphere, they would not have come to the area. Their spending is 3.2 million euros every year. And that is about three times the cost, the total cost for the visitor center and all the work we do in the biosphere. So that is uh, quite, quite an impact and um, shows that nature tourism is very important, at, that the work we all do at the, our visitor centers is so important, not only uh, for the changing of attitudes, but also for making people come to the area. So with that, I will uh, conclude my presentation by saying that uh, our goal is to make uh, people love the Vattenriket area and uh, do things that benefit both people and nature. And I so much want to uh, have uh, visits from, from those of you who uh, pass Scandinavia, please uh, just give me a, a call or send me an email and uh, I would be so happy to meet you at our visitor center. Thank you.